Hi, and welcome to this edition of Peak Life. Today, we're talking about the homeless population in our city. Joining me is Mary Riley, Community Programs Administrator with Human Services, and Sam Howard, Director of Chesapeake Area Shelter Team, or CAST. Welcome both back to the show. Well, thanks, say. Karen. Thanks for having us. Tell us about the homeless population in our city. Who are the homeless? Well, a lot of our homeless folks are cr what we call chronic homeless. They've been homeless for quite a while, and they're folks that we've seen year after year mm -hmm. in our CAST program or on the streets. But now we're starting to see more homeless that um, are new to the homeless situation, are new to the streets due to the pandemic. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of them have been evicted um, or have lost their housing because they couldn't afford to keep it up. So many of them are new to us, and um, we're trying to find ways to assist them. So I was going to ask, how has the pandemic or COVID affected the homeless situation? And for instance, the Resource Center that was recently opened in the past year. Right. So the Resource Center is still working with folks. It's still open three days a week, and folks can come in to take a shower or do their laundry, um, but also get assistance with housing. So we have a housing program within our continuum of care, which is our, our way of um, housing homeless folks in the region, um, so they can get assistance that way. And if they qualify, they can also, or if they meet the requirements, they can also um, get into the hotel. So we still are operating at the center. Mm -hmm. We're just not having folks in there like we did before. Last year we had between 25 and 50 folks in the resource center at one time. And with the pandemic, we just can't do that. So it's basically by appointment um, and they can get assistance in getting benefits, getting a job, um, getting housing, and, and like I said, the showers and the laundry. Okay. Now Sam, tell us about CAST and how the pandemic has, you know, the challenges that it has given you in regard to helping yeah, you bet. Yeah, it certainly impacted CAST. Ever since uh, the ca last CAST season ended in April, um, actually we ended early in March because we were unable to, the COVID hit and we were unable to house folks in churches. So churches have been closed and they're just unable to put people in their facilities. So thankfully Mary and the city of Chesapeake stepped up and found some funding and we have uh, 30 motel rooms that we can house 60 people which is great because it's more than we housed uh, really in CAST because we only did about 50 folks for CAST. Um, unfortunately, we're not able to house children, which is a concern, but four kids um, is going to hope to step up and, and be able to meet that need. And that's a nonprofit profit that is- You bet, here in Chesapeake. Locating in Chesapeake, yes. Right, so that's a great thing. Um, so the, the, the motel program has been excellent. For 60 people, it's been great. They're um, you're getting a great warm place to stay, showers, microwavable uh, food, and, um, and so that's been, it's been great. So talk about the meal programs that are currently Okay, um, these motel rooms, uh, this is where CAST has stepped up. The same CAST churches and other organizations have also stepped up, Chesapeake organizations, to come and feed these folks every night. Uh, 60 meals, hot meals, um, are being taken to the motel room where they can actually heat them up in the microwave in their room and that's being done every night, and it has been since April. Uh, we have fed, and this is really due uh, in large part to some folks at Prince of Peace, Sandy, Diane, and Bobby at Prince of Peace have really stepped up with their team and facilitated this. And so I've been told that we've served over 8,000 meals since April. In seven months. In seven in months, seven right. Months. right. And that's gonna continue. And so that's another thing we have to really think about is how this program is gonna continue Everybody talks about the new normal. We don't know what that's going to be, no. but it may be a, quite a while. And so we're going to need to reallocate funds and look for funds to help, help with that. So, you know, the homeless, like you said, it, it's changed a little bit in the sense mm -hmm. where people are finding themselves homeless that may never had imagined they'd be in this situation right. a year ago right. you know, exactly. because of the pandemic. Yes, exactly. And so we're trying to figure ways what, you know, what, what's this going to look like right. in a month or two? What's this going to look like in six months? How are we going to deal with that? Where are we going to find the housing? Because affordable housing is tough to find across right. the region, not only in our city, but mm -hmm. across the region. So where are folks going to go that either don't have income or have very limited income? 
And that's the ultimate goal, is that's to find permanent goal. homes for, for exactly. these folks. Because we want folks off the street. Mm -hmm. We don't want them dying on the street. Absolutely. And we don't want them to not have the resources to be able to live um, like human beings. So. Exactly. And, and you mentioned, too, you know, you are fortunate to be able to put some folks in a hotel. But some folks may be living in their car in a parking lot or on the street. Right, Karen. That's, that is true. Um, you know, it's great for the 60 folks that are in this motel room, but we have... And due to that, since we can't house everyone, we've had to start another feeding program where we have tried to find folks either living in parking lots or on the street and just bring them a bag meal, bag lunch, um, two or three days a week. Um, and it's, it's just sad when you actually go out there and you see families or people living in their cars when it's 32 degrees outside and uh, you see that. And everybody's got Absolutely. a different story. They've lost their job or they, um, they've been evicted. Mm -hmm. and. Um, they're living in a car, in a parking lot. And that's, that's one thing that I always try to think about. These are people like you and I. You exactly. know, they're, they're, they're human beings. Exactly. Like you mm -hmm. said, this, mm -hmm. you know, it could really happen to anybody. You exactly. just don't know. You just really don't true. know. You never know when you're standing next to or sitting next to someone mm -hmm. who has met obstacles and just can't make ends meet. And we've get. talked about that before. Yes. Where you have people who, who may not have their own place to sleep at night, but they get up and go to work every day. Exactly. But there just isn't enough funds to, right, to pay for housing. To and, pay for housing and, other, and everything um, that, essentials. utilities and everything that goes along with that. Karen, that's a good point. Let me just stay, say, we just ran across a fellow in a parking lot and we tried to give him a bag meal and he, he rolled down his window and he, he wouldn't take the meal. These are good folks. Right. Um, and this fellow had just, uh, uh, well, for different financial reasons, he he wasn't able to, he would be evicted. And so he wasn't able to live where he was. And so um, he wouldn't take the food because he said he works every day. He says, I've got money for food, but I just can't take food away from people who need it. So, I mean, these are good folks living mm -hmm. in these parking lots. Um, yeah, no one wants to be in that situation. No, no. no. It, it, you know. So what are some of the biggest needs right now for someone who may want to help? What can they do? Well, there's a couple different things. And I think we'll see some, uh, some maybe some emails up on the scrolling across mm -hmm. the TV that um, you can help volunteer. We need folks to deliver meals to parking lots, um, prepare meals, and you just have to get a hold of us. We can tell you how you can actually do that. Um, financially, we have um, there's a group called Mercy Chefs who is making meals. Um, they'll they'll make 60 meals uh, for $210 uh, a night. We'll we'll be able to give everybody a nice warm meal for $210 and. Um, that's just a break-even cost for them. It's a great service that they do. So, so financially, um, donations would be helpful. Okay, so they can just, I know we'll put up a website and that information, because this is especially a trying time with the holidays yes, coming exactly. up, and we're in a pandemic. And Also, let me just you know, say that while um, we are getting meals from Mercy Chefs a couple of nights a week, it really has been the faith-based community and our churches and local organizations that have made it work. They're the ones that have really helped to make those 7,000 meals happen mm -hmm. with the coordination of some, of some folks. But really, everybody's been working together. It's been a real ecumenical process mm -hmm. where you know it's not about me, it's not about my church, it's about really that's, hoping, that's helping these families or these, these folks. And I think it's it's a great way to give back to your community yes, and exactly. also this time of year, you know, to to really be helping somebody in need. So yeah. I thank you again for coming on again to talk about sure. um, the homeless in our city. Um, well, thank you for that. having us. Yeah, absolutely, having absolutely. Well, that does it for this edition of Peak Life, and we'll see you next time. <laughs>